I love Revelation chapter number 5. There's so much that we can look at in this chapter, but let's begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless your holy name. We're thankful, Lord, that we can come out to the house of God on this Lord's day and worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, just like on that great day in Revelation 5, you alone will be worthy to open the book. You alone are worthy to be praised. Lord, we bless you for Calvary. We bless you for the Scriptures. We bless you for the church of the living God. We bless you, Lord, for daily you loadeth us with benefits. We bless you that you're a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, we bless you for the way of salvation. Uh, Lord, we're thankful that you died, was buried, and rose again according to the Scriptures. Uh, made a way when you graft into the vine, a branch. Uh, made a way for old Gentile dogs to be born again. Uh, God, we're thankful, Lord, uh, you're still calling men to the mission field. Uh, we're thankful you're still willing to save uh, that which is lost. Uh, God, we're so thankful to be able to assemble uh, and come, into, uh, come apart from the world and come together uh, and lift up holy hands toward heaven and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, God, you've been good to us. Uh, thank you for the soul that was saved over to jail this morning. Uh, thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Uh, Father, thank you, Lord, for just being so good to us. Uh, now, Father, thank you for touching Miss Crystal uh, and her able to be here this morning. Uh, God, we know uh, your hand's been in it. Uh, and God, we bless you for it. Uh, now, continue to help her and touch her and help her to heal. Uh, Lord, we're thankful, Lord, uh, 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 that her family uh, is home uh, back from vacation. God, thank you, Lord, that the kids got to get away uh, and that they're back with us. Uh, Father, I pray now for Miss Sonny. You'd touch her and help her. Uh, I pray for Miss Kay's niece, uh, that, Lord, you'd touch her and help her. Uh, Father, I pray for all of our folks that are traveling, uh, that you'd give them traveling mercies. Uh, Father, I pray for every other need uh, that it be met in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, be with those that are providentially hindered, uh, those that are sick, uh, but these that have found themselves in the house of God this morning. Uh, Father, I pray uh, over the next few minutes uh, the Word of God, uh, Lord, would encourage them, it would edify them, uh, it would enlighten our minds to thy truth. Uh, God, put a hedge about us. Bind the powers of hell. Uh, and God, you know every need and every heart. Uh, God, in a crowd this size, there may be somebody here uh, that's never been born again. Uh, I pray before the final amen of this service, uh, they'd find Jesus precious to their soul. Uh, they'd come uh, and accept him as Lord and Savior. Uh, now use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake. Uh, help us now. Uh, Lord, as Brother Nathan brought it out uh, in Sunday school, uh, Lord, if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. So, Father, help us, uh, and we'll certainly bow these unworthy heads again. Uh, and thank you for your kindness. Uh, 
For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to draw your attention to some things in these uh, verses. I want you to, first of all, notice the pronouncement. We find in verse number uh, uh, 2, there, there is an angel, a strong angel, uh, that cries and claims with a loud voice, uh, Who is worthy to open the book uh, and to loose the seals thereof? Uh, I'm here to tell you, he's not sitting uh, in a ghetto somewhere. Uh, he's not sitting uh, in some uh, uh, sin-infested area. He's not sitting in some area uh, where nobody can be found. Uh, he is sitting in the abode of God. Uh, he is sitting before the glory of God. Uh, he is seated uh, amongst the four and twenty elders. Uh, he is seated amongst a crowd that the Bible goes on to say... Uh, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of uh, uh, souls that have put their faith in the Lord uh, are there. Uh, he's sitting above the cherubs. Uh, he's sitting in front of uh, 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 the uh, 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 seraphim uh, and the cherubim uh, and all the archangels. Uh, and he cries, uh, Who is worthy to open the book? Amen. Mm. Now notice the problem. Look at verse number 3. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And John says, And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. We see a problem. In all of that host, the heavenly host, no man was found. Did you ever wonder why John even cared? He's looking, and here's this book. It's written uh, uh, inside, not on the outside, on the back, and uh, sealed up with seven seals. Uh, why would John weep that nobody could open this book? Because there's a big deal being made about this book. Just think this morning, if you had no man could open this book. And somebody said, we really need what's in that book. Our only hope is in that book. But nobody was found to open it and expound on it. I wonder if we'd weep. That was not in my notes, but it just kind of occurred to me. Uh but why would he weep? Because hmm? there was no book like the book he's cast his eyes upon. We see the pronouncement, we see the problem, but praise the Lord for the prevailing one. Verse number 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Isn't it good when you get a comforting word from somebody? Uh, isn't it good when you're all tore up and you come to the house of God and the man of God opens the book and has exactly what you need to help you? Uh, isn't it good when you come to the house of God and a saint of God greets you with a smile, uh, uh, puts her uh, arms around you, says, it's so good to see you? It just seems like your problems fade for a moment, huh? He said, weep not. Uh, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. What a blessing, huh? Uh, aren't you glad? It goes on to say in verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, uh, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, uh, as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, uh, which uh, are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Uh, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Uh, aren't you glad for the prevailing one, uh, Notice some things about him. Uh, 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 he has been slain, uh, yet he is the risen lamb. Uh, uh, aren't you glad uh, 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 the end wasn't Calvary? Uh, aren't you glad uh, uh, that he came and he yielded himself and he laid down on the cross uh, and he was suspended between heaven and earth uh, and he sweat uh, 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 and he bled uh, 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 and he emptied himself uh, of his life's blood uh, and while he's on the cross uh, he took the handwritings of ordinances that were contrary to us 
and nailed him to his cross. Uh, and there when he saw all things were fulfilled, uh, he said, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. That'd be a pretty good story that he died for us. But we'd all still die and go to hell. That wasn't the end. Mm, he was buried and rose again on the third appointed day according to the scriptures. He's appearing in heaven as a lamb that had been slain. Yet, he's risen. Uh, he's been seated at the right hand of the Father. Been sitting there waiting for him to pull out the book. Hmm? Notice some things about him. There in verse 6 it says he has seven horns, seven eyes, uh, which are the seven spirits uh, 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 of God sent forth into all the earth. Uh, I don't know, I can't spend a lot of time right here. Uh, the seven horns represents, horns always represents power. Uh, those seven horns represents his omnipotence. Uh, he has all power. Uh, he is almighty. Uh, all power has been given unto him. Uh, uh, the seven eyes uh, represents he sees everything everywhere. That uh, represents his omniscience. Uh, he is everywhere all the time. Uh, uh, nothing's ever occurred to him. He sees it all. Uh, and the seven spirits spirits uh, 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 that represents uh, he's omnipresent uh, uh, but those seven spirits are defined in Isaiah 11 2 uh, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding spirit of counsel and might uh, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord uh, uh, you say who is that that's the Lord Jesus Christ right there uh, we see the prevailing one now notice after he gets this book. Notice the primary intuition. What is the reaction? The first reaction when the Lamb stands up and takes the book. Look with me down verse number 8. The Bible says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Uh, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Uh, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God uh, by uh, thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation, uh, 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 and hast made us uh, uh, unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign uh, on the earth. Uh, and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders uh, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousand and thousand saying with a loud voice uh, worthy is the lamb uh, that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor uh, and glory and blessing in every creature uh, which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth uh, and such as are in the sea and all uh, uh, the, that are in them uh, heard I say blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne uh, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Uh, and the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him uh, that liveth uh, forever and ever. Uh, uh, sounds to me like uh, 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 it was a big deal. Uh, it's going to be a big deal. Uh, and whoa! Uh, uh, the first primary into which and once he stands up as everybody falls before him. Now look at me back chapter 4 verse number 1. Chapter 4 verse number 1 said after this, after what? There's seven messages to the seven churches in chapters 2 and 3. It says and after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be here after. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one uh, sat on the throne, uh, and he that sat uh, was to look upon like jasper, like a jasper and sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne. Uh, inside like unto an emerald. I don't want to deal with that rainbow crowd in Cincinnati right now, but it's a different rainbow above the throne of God. All right? God resisted the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 
Let me read you this in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, uh, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another uh, with these words uh, Paul uh, uh, was inspired to write 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 uh, we find John's inspired to write John, uh, Revelation 4 uh, uh, 1 what is transpiring uh, what is taking place uh, it is what uh, we commonly refer to as the rapture of the church. Uh, we commonly refer to it as that, but it is the catching away of the saints. Uh, Paul said, there's coming a day, uh, he said, I want you to be ignorant uh, concerning them which are asleep, them that have died in Christ. Uh, there's coming a day uh, when the trump of God's going to sound uh, and the voice of the uh, shout of the archangel uh, and uh, uh, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Uh, then we which are alive and remain uh, shall be called caught up with them together uh, to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, 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 we find in Revelation chapter number 4 uh, 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 that uh, John says, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, uh, and the first voice which I heard was uh, as it were of a trumpet talking with me, uh, which said, Come up hither. Uh, uh, can I say uh, the next prophetical event uh, that is going to take place uh, is the rapture of the church. Uh, listen, uh, that is not Jesus' second coming. Uh, he does not come back to the earth. Uh, he steps out on the clouds uh, and he calls his church out of here. Uh, those that we have laid to rest, uh, they're going to go first. Uh, but we which are alive and remain uh, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, uh, we're going to be caught up together with them and we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, hey, what a blessing that's going to be. Uh, could happen at any time. Uh, I've read the book. Uh, I've studied the book. Uh, there's a lot of the book I don't understand. Uh, but what my pea brain does understand, uh, there is nothing that needs to happen in order for the Lord to take his church out of here. A uh, uh, friend could happen today. Uh, we ought to be uh, uh, packed up and ready to go. Uh, he's a coming uh, and when he comes I'm a going. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to preach on this thought. I'm going to preach on after the rapture. After the rapture. Can I say this? There's a lot of misinformation being promoted that isn't biblical. You better not take your doctrine from the internet. You better not take your doctrine from a book that man writes. You better take your doctrine rightly divided from the scriptures. Let me say there's nothing new under the sun and if it's new, uh, it's not true and if it's true, it's not new. You better stick with the old paths. You better stick with the fundamentals of the faith, which was uh, once delivered unto the saints by the Lord himself. And could I say this? I don't know why he got on Joe Osteen, so I'll get on this. Uh, Tim LaHaye that wrote that Left Behind series, if you've got that, uh, you need to mulch it up and put it in your garden. He teaches uh, the first establishment of that book is the rapture happens and he realizes the rapture happened uh, and then uh, all of a sudden he runs down to a church and everybody's gone and then he accepts the Lord and tells everybody else they need to accept the Lord. Well, you hang on, neighbor, and I'm going to blow that all out of the water. Because uh, that's not Bible. Uh, after the rapture. Can I say, first of all, let me talk about after the rapture to those that are saved. If you're here tonight or this morning, you've been saved by the good grace of God, 
you've been born again, your sins have been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I say hallelujah, God bless you, what a blessing to be part of the family of God, uh, and this part of the message is for you. What's going to happen after the rapture? Can I say, first of all, there's a lot of things going to happen after rapture, but I'm going to give you a few points because I've got to get on. I'll be here all day. But can I say the saved will proclaim the Lord's greatness. Amen. Look at verse number 9 again. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the, thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Uh, say, what's going to happen? The redeemed, the saved, those that have been uh, uh, washed in his blood from every tongue, people, nation, kindred, uh, we're going to rejoice uh, and we're going to proclaim his greatness. I wonder how many is going to be there from Denmark. Because uh, every day he's here, there's somebody in Denmark dying without Christ. I think we need to go ahead and take him on some, for support, don't you? Amen. All right, we're going to take on Brother Nathan Johnson for support. Amen. So I haven't even heard him preach. He'll come back tonight, you will. We might reassess how much we're going to give him, but we're going to take him on. <laughs> what are we going to do? We're all going to be assembled for the first time. Can I say, let me help you with something. The Lord did not die for an invisible universal church. The Lord Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, uh, out of the 115 times in the New Testament, you find the word church mentioned 112 times. Uh, it's referring to the local, visible, baptized body of believers. Uh, the Lord is a local church Lord. Uh, uh, but hey, when we get to heaven, uh, it'll be the first time the whole body's put together. Uh, and what a blessing. Uh, we're going to get over there. We're going to see uh, 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 folks that we've sent missionaries to that have heard the gospel and gotten saved. Uh, and because we were involved in missions, we were involved in them being there. Uh, hey, we're going to get over there. Uh, we're going to see folks there we thought God couldn't save. Uh, uh, God wouldn't save. Uh, but I'm glad God doesn't do things on our agenda. I'm glad Jesus tasted death for every man. Uh, I'm glad he said, whosoever will may come. Um, uh, and I'm glad God's in the saving business. Uh, one of the first orders that's going to happen when we all get there is we're going to proclaim His greatness. Nobody is going to be there saying, look at me, look at me. We're all going to be looking at the Lamb. Uh, can I say we will all participate in worshiping the Lord? We read verses 11 through 14 and you find them saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Uh, every creature's going to bow. Every creature's going to bless the Lord. Uh, every preacher's going to shout the glory of the Lord. Uh, everybody is going to proclaim the greatness of the lamb. Uh, let me help you something. If you get a little nervous when people get a little loud in church, you don't want to go to heaven. Let me help you with something. You don't want to go to hell either. You know what they're doing in hell right now? They're worshiping the Lamb. Because they know He's worthy to be worshipped and they know that, they, that He is being justified in them being there because they rejected Him and He's still worthy of their glory. The Bible said every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. But in glory, we're going to have a glorious time. We're going to shout her out. Might as well get practiced up now. How come people don't get nervous at the ballpark? Uh, we was over at Miss Nett's sister's yesterday and they lived down by River Road and, and there's, a, there's a park. I mean, it's a good ways off and they was out there playing soccer yesterday, 400 degrees, and you could hear people yelling and screaming that far away. You come to church, somebody gets a little happy. People get a little nervous. What's wrong with them? They got a good dose. That's what's wrong with them. What can I say? There'll be no problem worshiping over there. I got a problem. Let me pick on Brother Matt. I ain't picked on Brother Matt yet. 
He's a big fella. I'll see if I can get away with it. I got a real problem. Yes, sir. Somebody says they've been saved 40 years. Yes, sir. And you never see anything happen. Right. There's never a smile, never any tears, never any hands go up, never hit the altar, nothing. They just sit there. That's right. I don't know. I mean, if somebody as big as God yeah. moves down in on the inside of you when you get saved, somewhere along the line, he's going to show out. Now you may not worship like me You may not run like Brother Phil You may not uh, 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 hoop and holler And throw your hands up every service or But I'm saying if God lives on the inside of you Somewhere along the line He's going to come out uh, If he does not do some checking up But I promise you one thing If you're born again You will participate in worshiping the Lord can I say the saved will be promoted for a purpose? Look again in verse number 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Revelation chapter 1 tells us that now we've been made kings and priests. God has made us a king to rule and reign over our flesh. He has made us a priest so we can go directly to our advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to go through an earthly priest. We don't have to go through a ritual in order for God to be pleased. He has made us a priest and we can go directly to him in prayer through the Lord Jesus Christ. But we find in verse number 10 why he's made us a king and a priest. Because we're going to reign on the earth. It does matter how you serve the Lord. Uh, the more faithful you are in this life the more he'll let you reign over in the future life when we come back with him we're all going to rule and reign over some providence or over something in this world that's why it matters to be faithful I don't want to I don't want to be the one who, who's, who's over the garbage dump uh, I want to be faithful so I don't have to reign over the kitty cat collection, Miss <laughs> Dawn. Uh, you say, what will they do with kitty cats when the Lord comes back? They're going to grind them up and shoot them or something. I don't know. <laughs> but we'll be promoted for a purpose Amen. to reign on the earth. Now, how come folks don't have any problem doing a good job to please their boss in this life? You're right. Right. Amen. But they got a real problem pre pleasing the Lord. Yeah. And that's really the only life that matters. Amen. hundred years from now, the only thing that's going to matter is what we did for Jesus Christ. Right. Can I say the saved uh, will face pronouncement? After the rapture, 2 Corinthians 5.10 will come into play. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Yeah. A sobering thought that ought to be in the forefront of our minds is one day we're going to stand before Christ. Yeah. Now, Brother Adrian, praise the Lord. When I stand before Christ at the judgment seat of Christ, I'm not going to give an account of sin because sin was taken care of at Calvary. Amen. And when he saved me, he washed me from all sin. My past sin, my present sin, my future sin is gone by the blood of Jesus Christ. But I will give an account of the deeds done in my body since I've been saved. I'll give an account of what I did with this book. Because that's what we're going to be judged out of. And Romans tells us that every man will give an account of himself to the Lord. I'm not going to have to give an account for anybody else, me. i got a 24-hour day job trying to take care of this guy right here. Can I say I'm going to give an account of this book? I'm going to give an account of every time the Spirit of God burdened me to do something, and I said I'll get to it, and I never got to it. For those things I overcame, I'll get a reward. For those things that I didn't do properly, I'll lose a reward. It'll be burnt up, wood, hay, and stubble. We'll all appear at the judgment seat of Christ. 
uh, after the rapture. Can I say this? After the rapture will be presented. In Revelation 19, verse number 7, the Bible says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Can I say right now, I am robed in his righteousness. At the marriage supper of the Lamb, I'll be robed in white, fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. What will happen between here and there? The judgment seat of Christ. I cannot put on the wedding garment until I went through the judgment. Then we'll be presented. Just like this week when we'll present Miss Bailey to Brother Seth. And Brother Seth will forever be known as Mr. Bailey. <laughs> Uh, Seth you lose your identity you're going to become Bailey's husband and then if the Lord blesses you with children whatever you name children Doug <laughs> you'll be Doug's father don't do that to that poor child uh, so you're done been nice knowing you can I say when we get to the marriage supper of the Lamb, notice it doesn't say much about the bride. It's all about the Lamb. Because we lose our identity in Him. And then can I say after the rapture, the saved will be prepared to return. Revelation 19, 11, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as flames of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood uh, and his name is called the word of God uh, and the armies that you and I uh, which were in heaven followed uh, him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean uh, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp uh, sword uh, uh, that he should smite the nations uh, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God uh, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings uh, and lord of lords uh, we're coming back with him yeah. he's coming back to put an end of the battle that happens in the valley of Megiddo yeah. we call it Armageddon He's going to land on the Mount of Olives and it's going to split in two. You find that in Zechariah chapter 14. All nations, including the U.S., and I can see it's forming right now, will turn against Israel. We have protests all over this nation for terrorists against Israel. We give money to terrorists and not to Israel. We've had uh, this present administration... Uh, and the one uh, from 2008 uh, 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 to 2016 uh, who were blatantly for Muslims and against Israel. All nations will turn against Israel. All nations will uh, uh, set themselves in battle against Israel. And when it looks like Israel is going to be annihilated, the Lord's coming back and we with him. And he's going to destroy all those that fight against him. Then he's going to take up his abode on the throne of David and he'll rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years and we'll reign with him. All this happens after the rapture for the saved. How about for the unsaved? What happens after the rapture? Can I say, first of all, they're going to be conned You see, when the Lord takes his church out of here, the devil's going to take over through the person of the Antichrist. The devil, through the person of the Antichrist, is going to set up what has been proclaimed since the first George Bush presidency, a new world order. There'll be a one world economic system. 
Used to think it was some kind of cashless uh, credit card system, but now with cryptocurrency, it'll probably be that. Can I say that in this economic system, you will have to partake of the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell? The mark of the beast will be in people's foreheads or in their hands. There'll be some kind of barcode people scan or some kind of chip that people scan so they can take credits out of your account and buy and sell. First three and a half years or 42 months, the Antichrist takes over. He's going to solve all the world's problems. And people are going to worship him. And people are going to be conned thinking he is worthy to be worshipped. Let me give you some verses. In 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, uh, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, uh, that they might be saved." You remember at the beginning of this thing when I talked about that Left Behind series? Amen. Here's the verse. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Any person that has heard the gospel, you must be saved by grace through faith. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Anybody that's heard the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and that he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Anyone that has ever heard the gospel, if they reject it and the rapture happens, the Lord will bring strong delusion on them to where they'll believe a lie. They won't be running down to some empty church and saying, oh, I missed the rapture, I got to get saved. There will be no second chance for them because they've done rejected the Lord. Where the confusion lies is in chapters 7 of Revelation and other places in the Bible where it talks about 144,000 Jews will be saved through the great tribulation period. The period when we're being judged and we're worshiping in Revelation 5 and, and we're getting the wedding garment, that seven-year period when the Antichrist takes over uh, 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 the first uh, 32 months, not too bad. But the Bible calls it the time of Jacob's trouble. Because all nations are against Israel. Matthew 24, when, they, when, the, when Jesus said, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. He's talking about Jews. Jews that escape the hand of the Antichrist. 144,000 Jews will come out of the Great Tribulation period and will be saved. And the Bible says, A great man that no man can number who reject the mark of the beast. But those folks have got to be willing to be hunted down and martyred for their faith. And if folks can sit in a church service and not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you think that they're going to have their head chopped up for it? You say, who's that great number going to be? People that never had the gospel. People in parts of China and Indonesia and India and places that never heard the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord in His compassion, His mercy, and His justness will make a way where they too can have heaven as their home. Can I say, the second half of that great tribulation period after they've been conned, this is what happens. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship Him, the Antichrist, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Goes on in chapter 15 of Revelation 13, down about verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for is the number of man, and his number is six hundred three scold and six. Six, six, six. Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Six, six, six. Can I say? They'll be conned. 
You know, when I got saved in 1974, I know it was a half century ago. Colonel was 60 then. There was a lot of preaching on the rapture. We was, getting, we was going through the oil crisis. I remember when people, you know, they could only buy gas based on whether or not their license plate was odd or even. You're going in one day or the other day. There was a lot of, lot of problems going on in the Middle East, and everybody thought the Lord was coming. Everybody thought Henry Kissinger would be the Antichrist because he was a Jew. Uh, people didn't know what they was all associated. But I can remember hearing preaching, a lot of preaching, and I'm thinking, who would want something on their forehead or their hand where people could see? Amen. Have you been to the mall? <laughs> they got spikes coming out of their face now. Huh? Can I say the closer we get to this thing, the more the devil is normalizing the abnormal. If you don't believe that, just look at some of the footage of what happened in downtown Cincinnati yesterday. Hmm. Let me help you something. That's not normal. God made male and female. Huh? They're perverted and they're perverting God's word and they're perverting other people. So preacher, what should we do? You should pray for them. You should witness to them. If they're not reprobates, God will save them. But it makes me sick. It takes a whole lot of grace. Because that's not normal. But that's what the devil does. He takes the precious things of God and he distorts them. Can I say, for the unsaved after the rapture, they'll be conned. Then there'll be chaos. I don't have time to read all this. In Revelation 16, you'll find where there'll be earthquakes like never before. You'll find where there'll be some things come from the elements where the sun will send hail that will scorch men's bodies. You'll see some direct results of the seals being open and the judgment of God falling upon those that are worshiping the Antichrist. There'll be con, there'll be chaos, and then there'll be condemnation for them that are unsaved. I'm thankful for 2 Corinthians 5.10, for the saved, we're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. But for the unsaved, they don't, they don't appear before that judgment seat. Revelation 20.11 said, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. It goes on, verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. After the books have been opened, they've been judged for their sin. See, for the saved, we were judged at Calvary. My sins were paid for by Jesus Christ. For the unsaved, they, said, they tell Jesus, No, we don't want to accept you as our Savior. And for all of eternity, they'll have to pay for their own sins. And they'll never, ever, ever pay them off. Just as heaven is eternal, so is the lake of fire. Friend, I can cannot convey how much we're living in the last days. I don't know when the Lord's coming, neither do you. No man knows. No man knows the day or the hour. If somebody predicts the day or the hour, you note that booger. He doesn't know. The, he doesn't know. Right. But I can tell you this. It's getting close. Which side of the rapture are you going to be on? The saved in glory worshiping the Lord or left here only to face the wrath of the Lord? Friend, you don't have to be left. Amen. You can be saved. If you're not saved, the moment we're going to have an invitation, we're going to invite you to come to Jesus. Say, Preacher, I don't know how to be saved. It's simple to be saved. Yep. You just got to realize you're lost. Right. And if you'll come during the invitation, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved this very day. Have the assurance that heaven will be your home. Have your sins forgiven. 
Oh, there's nothing like being saved. If you're here today and you're saved, let me ask you this question. Are you ready? Too many saved people got their stakes driven too deep in this old world. Amen. We're too concerned about this world. We got our priorities all messed up. I remind you, the only thing you can take to heaven with you is other souls. Our priorities ought to be letting people know Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Are you ready to go to heaven? We don't know what a day brings forth. Amen. The rapture is going to happen soon. You may go to heaven before the rapture. Are you ready Amen. to stand before the Lord? Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Miss Tina, you come. And as they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the hope we have in Jesus this morning. Lord, we know your imminent return is at hand. Everything is lining up. Creation is groaning for your return. And Lord, I pray your church is ready for your return. Now, Lord, I certainly pray there's somebody here today unsaved. We know they're not ready. We pray they'd come. Let us take a Bible and show them how to be saved. They'd be saved today. God, we pray for that child of God that Lord, they're just not where they should be. I pray they'd get that settled today. Lord, I pray for any other need in somebody's heart and life. Lord, you'd meet that need during this invitation. So we ask you to speak to hearts. We pray that nobody would grieve the Holy Ghost. We pray that Jesus would have his willing way in every life. Bless now. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.